Hi, this is Scott Ferguson from SUNY Fredonia. Today I'm going to teach you how to dissect ovaries from female Drosophila for the purpose of immunohistochemistry. Um, to start off, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the tools that you'll need. First thing you'll need are two pair of uh, tweezers. We use um, Dumont number fives from Fine Science Tool, the Inox alloy, and you also need two needle chucks, also from Fine Science Tools. And a lot of people will tell you that you need to use um, tungsten dipped needles that are extraordinarily sharp. I've found that using simple sewing needles um, that you sharpen to, sharpen to a tip are much more economical and work just as well. Next we're going to use a depression slide. Put that in here. And to that we're going to add some phosphate buffered saline with 0.3% triton to ease the surface tension a bit. So we'll just make a little puddle of that right here. And next we're going to add our fruit flies. So these fruit flies have been fed yeast for about three days. And the way we do that is by putting dry yeast in a fly vial, so a fly food vial, and allow them to eat that for three days. That allows the ovaries to grow and um, for all stages to be represented approximately equivalently. And so you'll see I've got um, two tweezers in my non-dominant hand. I'm a righty, so in my left hand I'm holding the thorax with the less sharp pair of tweezers, and then in, in my right hand I've got my sharper tweezers and I'm going to grab the last segment of the abdomen and just pull. Now, we're fortunate here that the ovaries have come out um, right away. That's not always the case. So I'm going to go grab another fly and we'll do it again just to um, see the two different ways it can happen. So here's one of her sisters. Hold her with the left tweezers and with the right grab. Well, wouldn't you know, we're getting another one right away. Okay, I'll try this one more time. If they come out straight away, consider yourself lucky, but more often than not, this is what's going to happen where you have um, the abdomen pulled off and the intestines come out initially, but um, the ovaries are still inside. So without crushing the abdomen, you'll see that I'm just going to squeeze it very gently and massage it posteriorly, as though you're squeezing toothpaste out of a tube. And they'll start to emerge, and voila, we've got some ovaries. I'm going to zoom up a little bit here. You can see their structure. We'll focus on this pair right here. Okay, so you can see at the anterior they're largely translucent. This is where oogenesis begins. For each avarial, which is an assembly line structure um, of successively larger egg chambers, proceeding from anterior to posterior. At the anterior of that structure, there's a stem cell, several actually, that undergo an asymmetric division to generate um, a new stem cell, as well as the um, cell that will divide to become an egg chamber, and eventually the oocyte. Each of those um, cystocytes, which is the cell that is derived from the stem cell, undergoes four rounds of mitotic division without intervening cytokinesis. Um, the cytokinesis is incomplete and generates ring canal structures that connect each adjacent cell, generating a 16-cell cyst. One of those cells will become the oocyte, the other 15 will become nurse cells. You can see in the middle of the ovary here we have an egg chamber where the dark structure here is the oocyte, and then these cells here are nurse cells. This is another egg chamber, and a third egg chamber here. There's more mature eggs back here in the posterior. So 
before we can perform immunohistochemistry, we need to separate these ovarials into individual ovarials as opposed to having them bundled together in the ovary. The problem with leaving them bundled together is that the antibodies that we're looking to treat these with won't be able to permeate the structure and you'll get staining on the outside of the, the ovary and not in the interior. So I've got two needles. In my non-dominant hand, my left hand over here, I'm going to push all the way through the ovary down to the glass. This is going to pin it down so it can't move. And then I'm going to take my dominant hand, which has a slightly sharper needle, and comb these ovarials out. Now, I'm not going all the way down to the glass. I'm just going between the individual ovarials. And this allows for more surface area to be exposed to the solution and for antibodies and the formaldehyde fixative that we're going to treat them with to permeate the interior of the each egg chamber. So that's about where you want to be. You don't want to um, rip them completely apart because then they'll get lost during the staining procedure. But just separated like that. And I like to leave them joined down here at the, the very bottom. So we'll move on to the left over here. Pin it down and comb it out. You want to start at the anterior and work your way back. Just like if you had tangled hair, you wouldn't want to start right at the base and rip it right out. You can see I lost a, a varial up here. Yeah, that's fine, we got plenty. There you go. I'm focus down just a little bit so you can see them better. So if we take our pointer here, these are individual egg chambers. There's a more mature egg and it's hard to see in this video, but out here at the tip is the um, germarium where oogenesis begins. I'm going to do this again for one more pair of ovaries so you can see the, the technique a little better. So it's a matter of pinning it down and then combing it out. bit of patience is all you need. A steady hand. And the focus is a little bit better. Pin it down it out. There you go. You can see that they're largely individualized and ready to roll. One more time. Alrighty, so that's dissecting ovaries. Next step is to fix them. So what we're going to do is pick these up and put them into a solution of 4% formaldehyde, fix them for 20 minutes, and then wash them and they're ready to begin the immune histochemistry process.